A brief history of Mozambique. Hello, Displorers. Welcome to another interesting video presented to you by Displore, and thanks for watching. In this video, we shall look at the brief history of Mozambique. Mozambique, a scenic country in southeastern Africa, is a country rich in natural resources, biologically, and has cultural diversity and a tropical climate. Its extensive coastline fronting the Mozambique Channel, which separates mainland Africa from the island of Madagascar, offers some of Africa's natural harbors. These have allowed Mozambique an important role in the maritime economy of the Indian Ocean, while the country's white sand beaches are an important attraction for the growing tourism industry. Fertile soils in the northern and central areas of Mozambique have yielded a varied and abundant agriculture, and the Great Zambezi River has provided ample water for irrigation and the basis for a regionally important hydroelectric power industry. Yet, Mozambique's turbulent recent history has kept its people from fully enjoying these natural advantages and from developing a stable, diversified economy. A former colony of Portugal, Mozambique has an intriguing history, which still plays a major role in the country's current dynamics and politics. Hence, in this video, we shall take a trip down memory lane to look at the brief history of Mozambique. If you are new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Research uncovered in 2007 by Julio Maceda of the University of Calgary recovered dozens of 100,000-year-old stone tools from a deep limestone cave near Lignasa in Mozambique, showing that wild sorghum, the ancestor of the chief cereal consumed today in sub-Saharan Africa for flour, bread, porridges and alcoholic beverages, was being consumed by Homo sapiens along with African palm wine the false banana, pigeon pears, wild oranges, and the African potato. This is the earliest direct evidence of humans using pre-domesticated cereals anywhere in the world, indicating that this country was as well ahead of time in the world. The first inhabitants of what is now Mozambique were the sand hunters and gatherers, who were the ancestors of the Kusani people. Between the 1st and 5th centuries AD, waves of Bantu-speaking peoples migrated from the north through the Zambezi River Valley, and then gradually into the plateau and coastal areas who were predominantly farmers and iron workers. When Vasco da Gama exploring for Portugal reached the coast of Mozambique in 1498, Arab trading settlements had existed along the coast and outlying islands for several centuries and political control of the coast was in the hands of a string of local sultans. Muslims had actually lived in the region for quite some time, as modern-day Mozambique itself is a derivative of the name of the Arab Sheikh Musa bin Bik, who ruled the area at the time, leading to most of the local people embracing Islam. From about the 1500s, Portuguese trading posts and forts displaced the Arabic commercial and military hegemony, becoming regular ports of call on the new European sea route to the east. The voyage of Vasco da Gama around the Cape of Good Hope in 1498 marked the Portuguese entry into trade, politics, and society of the region. The Portuguese gained control of the island of Mozambique and the port city of Sofala in the early 16th century, and by the 1530s, small groups of Portuguese traders and prospectors seeking gold penetrated the interior regions where they set up garrisons and trading posts at Sena and Tete on the river Zambezi and tried to gain exclusive control over the gold trade. The Portuguese attempted to legitimize and consolidate their trade and settlement positions through the creation of prazos or land grants tied to Portuguese settlement and administration. While prazos were originally developed to be held by Portuguese, through intermarriage, they became African Portuguese or African Indian centers defended by large African slave armies known as Chikunda. Historically, within Mozambique there was slavery, as human beings were bought and sold by African tribal chiefs, Arab Muslim traders, Portuguese and other European traders as well. Although Portuguese influence gradually expanded, its power was limited and exercised through individual settlers and officials, who were granted extensive autonomy. The Portuguese were able to wrest much of the coastal trade from Arab Muslims between 1500 and 1700. But with the Arab Muslim seizure of Portugal's key foothold at Fort Jesus on Mombasa Island, now in Kenya in 1698, the pendulum began to swing in the other direction. During these wars, the Masri and Omani Arabs reclaimed much of the Indian Ocean trade, forcing the Portuguese to retreat south. 
Many puzzles had declined by the mid-19th century, but several of them survived. During the 19th century, other European powers, particularly the British and the French, became increasingly involved in the trade and politics of the region around the Portuguese East African territories. By the early 20th century, the Portuguese had shifted the administration of Mozambique to large private companies like the Mozambique Company, the Zambezia Company and the Nyasa Company, which was controlled and financed mostly by the British, which established railroad lines to neighboring colonies, South Africa and Rhodesia. Although slavery had been legally abolished in Mozambique, at the end of the 19th century, the chartered companies enacted a forced labor policy and supplied cheap and often forced African labor to the mines and plantations of the nearby British companies in South Africa. The Zambezia Company, the most profitable chartered company, took over a number of smaller Prazero holdings and established military outposts to protect its property. The chartered companies built roads and ports to bring their goods to the market, including the railroad linking present-day Zimbabwe with the Mozambican port of Beira. Due to their unsatisfactory performance and the shift, under the corporatist Estado Novo regime of Oliveira Salazar, towards a stronger Portuguese control of Portuguese empire's economy, the company's concessions were not renewed when they ran out. This was what happened in 1942 with the Mozambique company, which however continued to operate in the agricultural and commercial sectors as a corporation, and had already happened in 1929 with the termination of the Nyasa company's concession. In 1951, the Portuguese overseas colonies in Africa were rebranded as Overseas Provinces of Portugal. As communist and anti-colonial ideologies spread out across Africa, many clandestine political movements were established in support of Mozambican independence. These movements claimed that since policies and development plans were primarily designed by the ruling authorities for the benefit of Mozambique's Portuguese population, little attention was paid to Mozambique's tribal integration and the development of its native communities. These affected the majority of indigenous population who suffered both state-sponsored discrimination and enormous social pressure. The Front for the Liberation of Mozambique, Frelimo, initiated a guerrilla campaign against Portuguese rule in September 1964. This conflict, along with the two others already initiated in the other Portuguese colonies of Angola and Portuguese Guinea, became part of the so-called Portuguese colonial war which was between 1961 to 1974. From a military standpoint, the Portuguese regular army maintained control of the population centers, while the guerrilla forces sought to undermine their influence in rural and tribal areas in the north and west. As part of their response to Felimo, the Portuguese government began to pay more attention to creating favorable conditions for social development and economic growth, but apparently it was already late as independence feelings were already swelling. After 10 years of sporadic warfare and Portugal's return to democracy through a left-wing military coup in Lisbon, which replaced Portugal's Estado Novo regime with a military junta, Felimo took control of the territory. Within a year, most of the 250,000 Portuguese in Mozambique had left, some expelled by the government of the nearly independent territory, some fleeing in fear, and Mozambique became independent from Portugal on 25th June 1975. A law had been passed on the initiative of the then relatively unknown Armando Guebuza of the Felimo party, ordering the Portuguese to leave the country in 24 hours with only 20 kilograms of luggage. Unable to salvage any of their assets, most of them returned to Portugal penniless. Post-independent Formed in 1975, Mozambican National Resistance, Renamo, an anti-communist group sponsored by the Rhodesian Intelligence Service, and the apartheid government in South Africa launched a series of attacks on transport routes, schools, and health clinics, and the country descended into civil war. In 1984, Mozambique negotiated the Nkomati Accord with P.W. Botha and the South African government, in which Mozambique was to expel the African National Congress in exchange for South Africa stopping support of Renamo. At first, both sides complied but it soon became evident that the infringements were taking place on both sides and the war continued. In 1986, Mozambican President Samora Makel died in an air crash in South African territory. Although unproven, many suspect the South African government of responsibility for his death. 
Merkel was replaced by Joachim Chisano as president. The war was marked by huge human rights violations by both Renamo and Frelimo, with support for Renamo from South Africa drying up. In 1990, the first direct talks between the Frelimo government and Renamo were held. In November 1990, a new constitution was adopted and Mozambique became a multi-party state with periodic elections and guaranteed democratic rights. On October 4, 1992, the Rome General Peace Accord negotiated by the community of St. Egidio with the support of the United Nations was signed in Rome between President Cesano and Renamo leader Alfonso Zlacama, which formally took effect on October 15, 1992. A UN peacekeeping force, UNOMAS, oversaw a two-year transition to democracy, which led to elections in 1994, which were accepted by most parties as fair and free. Frelimo won under Joaquim Chisano, while Renamo, led by Afonso Zlacama, ran as the official opposition. In 1995, Mozambique joined the Commonwealth of Nations, becoming at that time the only member nation that had ever been part of the British Empire. By mid-1995, over 1.7 million refugees who had sought asylum in neighboring countries had returned to Mozambique, part of the largest repatriation witness in sub-Saharan Africa. An additional 4 million internally displaced persons had returned to their homes. In December 1999, Mozambique held elections for a second time since the Civil War, which were again won by Frelimo, who was accused of fraud. Presidential and National Assembly elections took place on December 1-2 in 2004, with Felimo candidate Armando Gebuza winning, and was inaugurated as the President of Mozambique on February 2, 2005. Despite all these struggles, Mozambique's economy is recovering, led by investors and tourists from neighboring South Africa and from East Asia. A number of returning Portuguese nationals have also invested in the country, as well as some Italian organizations. Coal and gas have grown to become large sectors and income per capita tripled over 20 years since the Civil War. In 2015, Mozambique was declared free of landmines, marking an end to a 22-year effort to remove explosive devices planted during the War of Independence and Civil War, and final liberation for the people. There you have it, explorers. That was a brief history of Mozambique. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy this video, do all to give it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.